Good morning. I'm Reverend Kathy Itson, and on behalf of Reverend T. Michael Rock and myself, we want to thank you for being here with us today. It's a good day, Memorial Day weekend, and we welcome you. We have been meeting outside in the parking lot, and for June, we will be meeting inside, um, and we would expect that you should bring your masks, and we'll decide at that point what we need to do. Um, we also will um, be meeting inside for uh, meetings as well as the Zoom opportunities so that we will be hybrid meetings. You can choose to either come if we've got a meeting here or if you prefer to Zoom with us, that's fine as well. We have a couple announcements today. Um, on June 5th, which is Saturday, we are doing a trip out to Patty McDonald's son's Christopher's farm. And there is a Facebook event invite up and Patty would appreciate it if we would respond that you expect to bring five people all together or two or whatever so that they can plan accordingly. But it's a day on the farm in Wisconsin about an hour and 15 minutes out. And that's all the information is on the Facebook event page. Um, they have chickens, they have a couple dogs, a lot of walks, walking paths in the woods and yard games, things to do to have fun, bring a picnic, it'll be a nice event. Um, I don't know as there's any other announcements. If there are, T. Michael will pick it up when he comes and does the prayers. But we wanna welcome you today. We're glad that you're here. 
So blessed that we are here in this virtual space, coming to you from the sanctuary to share our hearts, our joys, our concerns. Please start putting your concerns, your prayer requests in the chat, in the comment section, and know that people are reading those and holding them. And, and we have folks out there actually putting those prayer requests in their own prayer journals and making sure that every day we're holding people in heart and prayer and love. Um, so please keep those coming. Um, we're not going to repeat them today, obviously, because of recorded service. But know, know deep in your soul that Kathy and I will be looking at those as well, and, and we will be together in that space. I do want to share a couple joys and concerns. Um, one joy and concern kind of combination is that we're welcoming to our staff uh, Cindy Bergstrom as our new Minister of Music uh, in, in the next coming weeks. And, and so I just want you to hold Cindy in your prayer, send her a note welcoming her. And we will also be planning and experiencing how we're going to do the best farewell and uh, gratitude event for David Nordley in the, in the appropriate way. So I uh, know that both those things are in our hearts um, and, uh, and we will do that as best as we can. But for all those who are sick in body, mind, and spirit, we hold you in our prayers. We love you, we miss you, and we can't wait to see you next week in this space for an in-person worship setting, for in-person communion, to break bread together and share and love and gratitude. Amen. In 1893, Robbinsdale was established as a faith community. We recognize that our church resides on stolen land. Taken illegally from the Sisseton and Wapaton bands of the Dakota during the 1851 Session 289 Treaty. White settlers are responsible for the genocide, forced assimilation, and systemic violence against Native families and nations who lived in these regions. We who are non-Native confess that our ongoing colonization of the land is unjust, and that our broken relationships with the land is a root cause of our global climate crisis. We seek to live in a posture of repentance and repair and collectively seek to heal our relationship with the Dakota and Anishinaabe people, with this land and with our own souls. So let us center ourselves in that posture and take a deep breath. Let our spirits arrive here for worship as we proclaim together. Proclaim in your own setting, wherever you are. Robbinsdale Parkway United Church of Christ. Stands in solidarity. With the indigenous community. Friends, neighbors, and caretakers, Friends, neighbors, and caretakers. Of, air, of air, land, and water. We are ready for worship. Good morning. Please join me in this call to worship. Let us come and worship together. Different people, different lives, different histories. Let us come and worship together, bound together in one journey. Let us come and remember our journey. May we remember our celebrations, our suffering, and live into our hopes for resurrection. Amen. Hear these words from a Franciscan blessing. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain to joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness. Yes, enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in the world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done to bring justice and kindness 
to all our children and the poor. Amen. The reading from John 3, 1 through 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. And Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. And Jesus answered Nicodemus, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to Jesus, how can these things be? And Jesus answered, are you not a teacher of Israel? And yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into the heaven except the one who has descended from heaven, the one of God. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the one of God be lifted up, that whoever believes in the Son of God may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that God gave this only one, so that everyone who believes in the one may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the one into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through the one. God is still speaking. Thank you, Diane, for that beautiful reading from the Gospel of John. We are so blessed to have such talent and, and gifts to share and to uh, incorporate not just a reading, but a reading from the heart. 
Um, this is an important scripture on this Pentecost part two kind of day. Uh, we celebrate the spirit moving in us and through us and, and how that continually moves us uh, into transformation and hope and builds our community. We love this idea that we get to celebrate Pentecost over and over again as the spirit enters into our lives. Let us start this sermon with a prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. This Memorial Day, where we do hold in prayer all those who have served and sacrificed and all their families. We know that none of us give our lives to um, in, a, in a vacuum. We, we carry the community with us, our families with us, and, and that sacrifice is felt by all. And so we lift up all those who have served and those who have died in that service. And we know that in this moment, you are with us in this Pentecost way, that beyond our listening ears, beyond what we know in our language, in our culture, there is still truth out there that we are waiting to learn and grow into. We give you thanks that your message crosses boundaries, takes us to the margins of our knowing, and creates new life. And now may the words of our mouths and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our God, our rock, our redeemer. Amen. <sighs> Diane started that beautiful reading with introducing Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee and leader of the Jews. And I want to speak to this truth right there in that line. Nicodemus, a Pharisee, a person of the law, the Jewish law, and a leader of the Jews. He has clout, he has authority, he, he comes with all kinds of um, power into this relationship. And he's questioning Jesus about uh, this ministry that he has, this ministry of transformation and truth. And it's a, it's a beautiful way to understand who Nicodemus is. Because this is the conflict that the culture is always being faced with. What do people in power say to religious leadership that is authentic and true and humble and servant-focused and kind, and they're scared of it? The power, the empire, is always scared of the true faith experience of people who come at this expression with humility and grace. <sighs> I can imagine Nicodemus quaking in his shoes. He's supposed to carry all this, this stuff, this authority with him, but he's face to face with Jesus, this, this, this servant leader who has just recently in Scripture turned water into wine and turned the whole celebration from a short time experience to a week long uh, transformational possibility, and he becomes known to everybody despite his own, uh, his own wants. He becomes known as the person who can make miracles happen, and this scares the people in authority. They've heard inklings of this preaching that is about healing and justice and love, and Nicodemus is right there saying, who do you think you are? Who do you think this ministry is about, and why are... Why, why are you so intent on threatening the power, the powers that be? And Jesus goes through this whole piece of what it means to be born from above and, and this, this powerful thing about how God gave the world this only love, this, this child that was going to redeem everyone. And the, and the whole scripture ends with this incredible piece that Jesus says, I did not come to condemn the world but to save it. Now you got to kind of live into and kind of ground yourself in this abiding truth, facing the, the leader of the Jews, the leader of the culture, the leader of the religion, and said, I am not here to condemn you or anyone else, but through my humility and grace and love to save, to redeem, to, to bring out your truth. Now, friends, the empire is always hiding behind their power. 
But Jesus puts it right in front and says, stop hiding. Come to a place of being saved. And it's not a place of belief. It's a place of knowing who you are and how you're connected to all the earth and all the children. We're not here to condemn anyone, but we are here to save. This is the greatest message that could come and why John 3 is always out there um, in, in the ether. But unless we kind of are right there confronting that power, not condemning it, but confronting it, just like Jesus did. This is the avenue to the truth, the, 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 the place of our grounding for a new church, a new possibility, a spirit-led movement that Pentecost then opens up to everybody. Come and enjoy the good news and the wisdom and the prophecy of Pastor Kathy Itzen. Well, last week we had Pentecost, and it was when we chose to confirm our young individuals. They chose to be confirmed, which is their big yes, yes to community, yes to God as they see God. And the reason that we usually choose that to have confirmation on Pentecost, not always, but why it's a great day to do it, it's the day that we celebrate the big yes, the big opening ourselves to God and God filling us, however God does that. So Pentecost was an ancient Jewish festival, a harvest festival, which turned into celebrating when the um, commandments were given to Moses on Mount Sinai. And that's why all these Jews were gathering in Jerusalem for this celebration. But what surprised everybody, and that's why it's a huge Christian holiday, is that the Holy Spirit came not just to the Jews, the faithful ones, not the apostles, the disciples, the Jews even, but to absolutely everyone, and no one was expecting it. No one had prepared themselves for it by doing anything special. And so the Christian community says, that's amazing that God is everywhere and in everyone, regardless of that person's personality or disposition or anything. And the church does a cool thing. We take the word remember and if you think of dismembering, it's pulling things apart. It is taking the life out of them. It is separating them. But to remember something is to pull it back together and to give it new life. And so when we remember things in the church, like Jesus being born, it's not just something that happened a thousand million years ago. It's something that continues to happen right now to all of us in all of our lives. Jesus continues to heal. Jesus continues to teach. Jesus continues to do everything. And that's because before it was one guy and now it's all of us. And the cool thing, one of the cool things that he said was as he was leaving, he said to his disciples, his faithful people, he said, don't worry so much. I will send, I'm going, but I'll send the Holy Spirit to be with you always. And it's like, that's an amazing statement. And it's like, what difference does it make? Does it make a difference at all? People had God before, but now they knew God is there. I love the Holy Spirit. I love Pentecost because the Holy Spirit's probably like one of my favorite things in the world. It's like what gives life, what gives animation, love, new beginnings, justice, everything. The Holy Spirit is what starts that within us as a little bit of insight or an idea, an inspiration, a hunch, a what have you, that little voice that creates great change everywhere. And Nicodemus, that's kind of like what Nicodemus was asking about. Jesus says, yeah, you know, you, you need to be born again. And, Jesus, and he's like, how can I be born again? What does that mean? And people have talked about this, fought about that phrase forever. What does it mean? For me, what it means is every morning I wake up my eyes. I wake up my eyes. I wake up again and open my eyes, and it's a new start. And beyond that, it's a new start every time I move, every time, every second is a new start. And not like I need to be a whole different person than what I was yesterday or the day before, but in a sense I am. I continue to grow and open myself. One of the lovely things that Rumi said, and, and we've talked about Rumi before here, uh, T. Michael quotes Rumi all the time, I love Rumi too, he was a great uh, mystic millions of years ago, a Sufi mystic, and Rumi says, Make of yourself an ear. Make of your whole body an ear. Because if you want to open yourself, 
God will speak to you. And God doesn't speak to us all in the same way. And God doesn't speak to us in the same way day to day. We can know things by being in nature. We can know things by an interior knowing. T. Michael will say something and I'll think, oh my gosh, that is exactly right. And when I think that, it tells me that's important. My wife says that. My kids will say something. I see something on the news or in the paper. And when I've got a sense like that's right, that tells me something I need to know. That's the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it's like, I need an answer to this problem. And I open myself and I realize I figured it out a couple hours later. Other times, things that are more complicated, I get little pieces day after day. As I go along, as I Google something, as I listen to my friends, as I talk to people, as I pray, and that's all the Spirit of God, which is Jesus' personality, really. That's how Jesus is living among us now, and it does make a difference. It's not just some, you know, prayer thing up in the ether. It's a real thing. This wisdom that we have within us and in listening to others and in recognizing something in nature, in beauty, in the news. Speaking of the news, I read this great article the other day. During the Derek Chauvin trial, one of the witnesses was an older African-American man with big white glasses. You might have remembered him. His name was Charles McMillan, McMillian, and he was just happening to be there when Derek Floyd um, killed, excuse me, when Derek Chauvin killed um, George Floyd. And as he was witnessing it, he was encouraging George Floyd, like, just get in the car, just get in the car. And it didn't work. And later on, I don't know if he said something to the police officer or not, but he was there for the whole thing. And so he was called as a witness. And as he was witnessing it again and again and remembering it, he started to cry because it was a traumatic, awful, awful event that no one would want to witness. But across the nation, another guy, Richard Glassman, was watching this in California. And he said to his wife, and this is what was in the paper, he said to his wife, I could tell that man had a hard life, but he, he knew to act out of love, and he knew to do the right thing, and he did. And he was so touched by this man's experience, that he also said to his wife, Janice, who is dealing with breast cancer, you know what, I wish we could give him a vacation. I would like to give that guy a vacation. And his wife said, and I love this, she said, well, yeah, if we can swing it, let's do it. And I love those words, because it's not like I'm a multimillionaire, I'm gonna drop a little of my excess money. It was like, if we can work it out, let's do this. And so they did. They were able to get a hold of Charles McMillan through his son's Facebook page and eventually got the message and they paid for him and his son to fly out to California and have like a week vacation, driving along the coast, walking along, enjoying things, living in a hotel and eating. And, and Charles McMillan had never been on an airplane. He had never seen the ocean. And this is the Holy Spirit. And when he left, the couple that gave him this vacation said, they wish they could just see him longer because he was such a good man. He was such a nice man. That is exactly what we're talking about on Pentecost. That's what we're talking about in Nicodemus. It doesn't have to be extraordinary. All this was extraordinary. Sometimes it's just the day-to-day -day things. All the time it's the day-to-day -day things. When I think, oh yeah, you're surrounded by God continuously, Kathy. The Holy Spirit's within you all the time. Am I aware of that all the time? No, I certainly am not. Even when I'm aware of it intellectually, am I like living in that presence, feeling that emotion of closeness with God? No, not all the time, most of the time not. I'm busy working, I'm busy taking care of my grandchildren, I'm busy doing what errands I need to do. But that is where the Holy Spirit works. That's what both of those gentlemen were doing. One guy's watching the news, the other guy's walking along and happens to be upon this disaster, be a witness to it. 
That's the thing that is great about the Holy Spirit is you don't have to be doing something special or some special kind of awareness. It's like being open to God and wanting to make yourself an ear. So however God speaks, you're able to hear that and you're able to act on it. It's that don't be afraid. Don't be worried. I will send the Holy Spirit who will be with you always. And those words sound a little bizarre, the Holy Spirit. I mean, we've grown up with them. Most of us have grown up with them as children. But what is it? It's not something that we think of as normalcy. But if we think of the power of love, he still had the power of love. He still chose to do the right thing. Well, yeah, if we can swing it, let's do it. Those ordinary things are what the Holy Spirit is composed of. It's what the Spirit acts through. So maybe we don't want to use such churchy words for it. Maybe we want to say that spirit of love, that spirit of justice, that doing the right thing, that responding right now the best way you can. That's it. That's the power of love. Amen. Let us be in a spirit of prayer. We open our hearts in this moment because on these Pentecost prayer days, the spirit is in charge. It moves among us, helps us to understand and to listen in new ways. That loving spirit changes us invites us into deeper relationships with those we know and new relationships with those we don't. The power of the Spirit in this moment invites us into a prayerful posture, a way to open ourselves up to these new relationships and these new understandings. So as we hold in prayer those who have served and those who have lost their lives, we also think of the new possibility of when we don't need to every single year move into that place, but think about all the people who sacrifice in a new way, a new way of service that isn't based in war economy, but something that is completely different to build structures, to, to find housing and food and, and comfort and care for all those who are without. Let us combine all our prayers into the one prayer you taught us to pray. Our Mother and Father who are in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. It is with gratitude that we move now into our offertory time for more music and more giving of our hearts. And you can always give in so many ways. That's, and give through all kinds of inspiration. Give for our, our pledge drives, but also for all the different things you're inspired by, all the different connections the Spirit is moving in your life. A, a community that gives in generosity is a community that continues to grow and nurture and support one another. So, so give with that wholehearted sense of love. Amen. I dreamed of rain and the rains came Soft and easy, sweet and clear I dreamed of rain, and the rains came, and peace spread over the land. I dreamed of summer, and the winds changed, and the green was easy, and the rivers ran clear. I dreamed of summer, and the winds changed, 
and peace spread over the land. And the flowers bloomed in the desert, and the air is fresh and clear. I dreamed of rain, and the rains came, and peace spread over the land. I dreamed of freedom and the moon rose, and the way was easy and the path was clear. I dreamed of freedom and the moon rose, and peace spread over the land, and the garden stars are shining. And the night is bright and clear. I dreamed of freedom and the moon rose, and peace spread over the land. I dreamed of heaven and the earth sang, and the sound was easy. The song was clear. I dreamed of heaven and the earth sang, and peace spread over the land. And the ancient pain is forgotten, and the Father's debts are clear. I dreamed of heaven and the earth sang. prayer from Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We thank you for your church founded upon upon your word that challenges us to do more than sing and pray but go out and work as though the very answer to our prayers depended on us and not upon you. Help us to realize that humanity was created to shine like the stars and live on through all eternity. Keep us we pray in perfect peace. Help us to walk together, pray together, sing together, and live together until that day when all God's children, black, white, red, brown, and yellow, will rejoice in one common band of humanity in the reign of our Lord and of our God, we pray. Amen. Amen. My heart sings out with joyful praise to God who raises me, who came to me my destiny. The Holy One, the living God, is always full of grace to those who seek their Maker's will in every time and place. The arm of God is strong and just to scatter all the proud. The tyrants stumble from their thrones and vanish like a cloud. The hungry all are satisfied that Show sent away the power of earth who suffer long will conquer God's new day. Love was made in ages past, at last has come to be. The God has come in power to save, to set all people free. Remembering those who wait to see salvation's dawning day. Our Savior comes to all.
now let us go forth with love, with justice, with kindness, in humility, recognizing who we are as brothers and sisters to the earth, to the creation, and to each other. Amen. Thank you.